The distinctive Westland Lysander comes in a moderately sized box. Parts are plastic wrapped with additional bubble wrap to separate the pieces. There are a fair number of parts that comprise the kit, including fuel tank and motor mount for glow engines. The manual is well illustrated and has details for both glow and electric setups. There were a couple of nitpicks, however, which I'll detail later. The all silver iron-on covering is done quite well and I didn't notice any wrinkles. A nice server mount plate and carbon wing alignment pin are built in. Fuselage construction is well built and somewhat complex. Again with wrinkle-free covering and fuel-proof firewall. Under the greenhouse is a pilot bus with detailed cockpit and an impressive truss work of balsa and plywood that built up to a metal wing mounting system. A simple to operate battery hatch reveals more impressive interior woodwork, while the bottom hatch allows easy access to servo mounts. If I were to nitpick, it would be that the rudder to fuselage joint could have used a bit more fine sanding before the covering was applied, but it is not that noticeable. The build starts with gluing the ailerons pre-slotted hinges with thin CA. Next is on to installing the aileron servos into their respective wing mounts. The mounts are sized for standard size servos like these Tactic TSX-53s. All the control hardware is included and installed as instructed. Wing mounting bolts are already installed and are revealed by removing a bit of covering on top. Installing the wings is straightforward. Get it? Get it? Anyways, loosen the hold down screws and slide the wings into the wing tube, then tighten the screws again. I thought there was an impressive amount of engineering involved in the wing mounting system. The wheel pants are nicely finished reinforced fiberglass that needs a bit removed for the wheel axles. Be sure to make a left and right side. Installing the sturdy metal landing gear requires some covering to be carefully removed from the fuselage bottom, after which you install the wing strut brackets and landing gear legs. Next, assemble the wheel and axles using the included hardware to mount to the gear. The wing struts required a bit of assembly starting with gluing the two halves together and then installing the balls into the clevis. The last of which wasn't quite clear to do in the manual. While bending the lower strut mount slightly so that it would match the angle of the strut, it was at this point I noticed that the mounting pin would not fit in the hole. Removing the bracket, I noticed that the manual had failed to mention that one hole was larger than the other two. So simply rotating the bracket around 180 degrees fixed the problem. Once corrected, the strut pin fit with no problem. The manual does make note of plywood plates located in the wing's underside. These are easily identified by subtle square flat spots under the covering. I marked a reference spot for the struts and screw them into position after drilling a small pilot hole. The struts are load bearing so be sure they are mounted sturdily. Horizontal stabilizer mounting is typical of ARVs which requires strategic removal of covering and gluing into place with epoxy. Before gluing the rudder, you will need to install the tail wheel by first opening the holes for the axle pivot in the top and bottom of the rear fuselage. Then measure and mark where to bend the wire into the rudder. If you've done it correctly, the rudder should slide right into place. 
find and open the slots for the tail control rods and then mount the servos. Moving on to the front end, the cow mount rings needs to be installed, but in my case, the slots didn't match up perfectly. This requires some strategic trimming of the pegs with a hoppy knife. Glue into place once the fit is good. Assemble the three motor mount plates with glue and install the blind nuts. The recommended motor is a Rimfire 55480KV motor, which is rated for up to 1800 watts. Since the included firewall screws didn't fit the motor mount, I need to drill out the bracket slightly. Add the standoffs, then bolt into the firewall. Using thread lock is a good idea here. I also found a nice space to mount the speed controller on top. The dummy radio engine takes a bit of assembly, which starts with epoxying a plywood ring to the outer perimeter of the plastic form. Then the excess plastic is trimmed off and sanded flush. I drilled the center hole with a step bit, then further enlarged it with a hobby knife. Next, install the unit into the fiberglass cowl. The manual says to use epoxy, but I decided to use hot glue as I might remove it later to paint it. Let's hope it holds. With the cowl loosely fitted, the spinner backplate is mounted and strips of tape are used to help align the cowl before drilling. The tape acts as guidelines for drilling and mounting the screws. The spinner did not quite fit until the prop opening was trimmed a little bit. But once that was done, I finally had a completed airplane. The motor structures were a little vague on the recommended prop, so I tested two sizes. First was a 12 by 10, which pulled 930 watts on six cells. Next was a 14 by 10 that pulled just over 1300 watts at 60 amps. The last of which seemed very good numbers for an eight pound plane. Lastly was the decals. Cut, peel, stick. No issues there. With the controls set up per the instructions, the next step will be the flying field. 